Great day, grade 12 students. Welcome to Bamboo Tala Escuela. This is your school on air in earth and life science. I am your teacher, Jaiseline Cornejo. Make sure to have your learning activity sheets with you and tune into DWND-FM and CMD Cable Channel 8 and also streaming live at SDO Kawayan Facebook page. Let's start the year right. Amidst this pandemic, learning must continue. Are you ready? Let's go and explore and expand our journey in the world of Earth and Life Science. We are now to discover life science biology. And today's lesson will be all about animal reproduction. Keep in mind, this will be our learning competency for this week. For you to be able to describe different ways of how representative animals reproduce. Like plants, animals need to reproduce in order to increase the chance of perpetuation of their species and prevent extinction. There is an assumption that animals reproduce only through the process of fertilization or the fusion of the sperm cell and the egg cell. Actually, like plants, animals also undergo asexual, sexual, or both methods of reproduction. Let us take a look at the difference between asexual and sexual reproduction. Let's now compare the two types of reproduction in terms of gametes or sex cells. A sexual reproduction happens in animals whereby one parent produces offspring by cell division or without the fusion of sex cells or gametes, namely the sperm cell and the egg cell. On the other hand, sexual reproduction happens in individuals where they are formed from the fusion of the gametes or sex cells which are being produced by the sexual organs of the parents. Remember that both types of sexual reproduction allows the survival of the animal species. Let us now take a look at the advantages and disadvantages of both types of reproduction. Asexual reproduction. This is a type of reproduction which is commonly found among lower, simpler, or smaller forms of organisms. Asexual reproduction is advantageous, but how? In a short period of time, without exerting much effort or energy, can produce many offsprings. Many offsprings produced somehow ensures the survival of the species. But a sexual reproduction has also a disadvantage. But how? There would be a lack of variation among individuals produced and the changing environment may wipe out a group of these organisms that cannot adapt to sudden change. An example would be when a certain species of a simple animal is adapted to a temperature range of 20 to 30 degrees Celsius and suddenly the temperature goes up to 40 degrees Celsius, most probably the whole species will be wiped out since they have exactly the same characteristics adapted only to a specific temperature. On the other hand, sexual reproduction is a type of reproduction which is commonly found among higher or more complex forms of organisms, like us humans. Just like a sexual reproduction, sexual reproduction has its disadvantage. A disadvantage of sexual reproduction is in terms of energy expenditure. 
more energy is required for animal species to undergo sexual reproduction. From the formation of the sex cells to the formation of an offspring to become a separate functioning individual. A high amount of energy is needed and used up just to produce an individual being. On the other hand, sexual reproduction is advantageous due to the genetic variation it creates. So what is genetic variation? This refers to the differences of individuals in a certain population. This happens through the combination or the union of the sperm and egg cell from the male and the female organism to form an offspring. Remember that both sperm and egg cell have different genetic characteristics. Therefore, when combined, creates more genetic variation in the individual being formed. This allows organisms to perpetuate in an unstable environment where factors such as disease can decrease the survival rate of the population. But since individuals are genetically variated, it will not be the whole population that will be extinct. Overall, both asexual and sexual reproduction works in lower and higher form of animal species to allow survival and prevent extinction. With that, let us now proceed to the different methods of asexual and sexual reproduction. Let us first have the methods of asexual reproduction. Budding. This results from the outgrowth of a part of a cell or body region leading to the separation from the original organism into two individuals. Budding occurs commonly in some invertebrate animals such as corals and hydras. In hydras, a bud forms that develops into an adult, which breaks away from the main body. Whereas in coral budding, the bud does not detach and multiplies as part of a new colony. Binary fission. It occurs in prokaryotic microorganisms and in some invertebrate and also multicellular organisms. After a period of growth, an organism splits into two separate organisms. Some unicellular eukaryotic organisms undergo binary fission by mitosis. In other organisms, part of the individual separates, forming a second individual. This process occurs, for example, in many asteroid echinoderms through splitting of the central disk. Some sea anemones and some coral polyps also reproduce through fission. Fragmentation. 
This is the breaking of the body into two parts with subsequent regeneration. If the animal is capable of fragmentation and the part is enough, a separate individual will regrow. Many sea stars reproduce asexually by fragmentation. For example, if the arm of an individual sea star is broken off, it will regenerate into a new sea star. Fragmentation also occurs in annelid worms, tubularians, and proliferans. The last one is parthenogenesis. This is a form of asexual reproduction where an egg develops into a complete individual without fertilization. The resulting offspring can be either haploid or diploid, depending on the process and the species. Parthenogenesis occurs in invertebrates such as water fleas, rotifers, aphids, stick insects, some ants, wasps, and bees. Bees use parthenogenesis to reproduce haploid males, which are known as drones, and diploid females, which are known as workers. If an egg is fertilized, a queen is produced. The queen bee controls the reproduction of hive bees to regulate the type of bee produced. Some vertebrate animals such as certain reptiles, amphibians, and fish also reproduce through parthenogenesis. Although more common in plants, parthenogenesis has been observed in animal species that were segregated by sex in terrestrial or marine zoos. Again, there are four methods of asexual reproduction budding, binary fission, fragmentation, parthenogenesis. Moving on, let us proceed on how sexual reproduction occurs. As mentioned, sexual reproduction is the fusion of sex cells or gametes produced by the parents in their sexual organs to create an offspring. Most animals, particularly the higher forms, reproduce sexually. With that, let's recall. The testis is the organ that produces the male gametes called the sperm cells. Sperm cells are the motile cells to search for the egg cell for fertilization. The ovary is the organ that produces the female gametes called egg cells. The egg cells usually are non-motile to ensure survival of the embryo by storing energy. Keep in mind that the primary goal of sexual reproduction is fertilization the merging or union of the sperm and the egg of an animal to make a baby. And there are two types of fertilization in sexual reproduction. External fertilization and internal fertilization. In external fertilization, female lay eggs along riverbeds or seas, then males come along to spray eggs with sperm. 
Examples are frogs, fishes, and snails. In internal fertilization, fertilization takes place inside the body of the female. Examples are humans, dogs, and cats. Keep in mind that external fertilization is not practical for terrestrial animals because gametes dry out quickly when exposed to air. Thus, during internal fertilization, the male places its semen, a fluid containing sperm, directly into the female's body which increases the chances of successful sexual reproduction. With that, these are the stages of sexual reproduction in animals. The first one is the transportation of the sperm. Second, the delivery of the sperm. Third, the fertilization of the ovum. And fourth, fetal development. In transporting the sperm, the combined secretions of the glands in the male reproductive system, which are collectively called semen, nourishes the sperm cells. The testes are where sperm are produced. The testes are linked to the rest of the male reproductive organs by the vas deferens, which extends over the base of the pelvic bone or ilium, and wraps around the ampulla, seminal vesicle, and prostate. The urethra then runs from the bladder through the penis. Sperm production in the testis takes place in cold structures called seminiferous tubules. Along the top of each testicle is the epididymis. This is a cord-like structure where the sperm mature and are stored. The release process starts when the penis fills with blood and becomes erect. Continuing to stimulate the penis will cause an ejaculation. Mature sperm begin their journey by traveling from the epididymis to the vas deferens, which propels sperm forward with smooth muscle contractions. The sperm arrive first at the ampulla, just above the prostate gland. Here, secretions from the seminal vesicle located next to the ampulla are added. Next, the seminal fluid is propelled forward through the ejaculatory duct toward the urethra. As it passes the prostate gland, a milky fluid is added to make semen. Finally, the semen is ejaculated from the penis through the urethra. In delivering the sperm, the penis, which is the male organ, deposits the sperm in the female reproductive system during sexual intercourse or copulation. What happens next? The sperm exits the penis through ejaculation, which is the expulsion of the sperm out of the male's body. Third stage, the fertilization of the ovum or the egg cell. Fertilization is the epic story of a single sperm facing incredible odds. To unite with an egg and form a new human life, it is the story of all of us. During sexual intercourse, about 300 million sperm enter the vagina. Soon afterward, millions of them will either flow out of the vagina or die in its acidic environment. However, many survive because of the protective elements provided in the fluid surrounding them. Next, the sperm must pass through the cervix and opening into the uterus. Usually, it remains tightly closed, but here the cervix is open for a few days while the woman ovulates. 
The sperm swim through the cervical mucus, which is thin to a more watery consistency for easier passage. Once inside the cervix, the sperm continues swimming toward the uterus, though millions die trying to make it through the mucus. Some sperm remain behind, caught in the folds of the cervix, but they may later continue the journey as a backup to the first group. Inside the uterus, muscular uterine contractions assist the sperm on their journey toward the egg. However, resident cells from the women's immune system mistaking the sperm for foreign invaders, destroying thousands more. Next, half the sperm head for the empty fallopian tube while the other half swim toward the tube containing the unfertilized egg. Now, only a few thousand remain. Inside the fallopian tube, tiny cilia push the egg toward the uterus. To continue, the sperm must surge against this motion to reach the egg. Some sperm get trapped in the cilia and tie. During this part of the journey, chemicals in the reproductive tract cause the membranes covering the heads of the sperm to change. As a result, the sperm become hyperactive, swimming harder and faster toward their destination. At long last, the sperm reach the egg. Only a few dozen of the original 300 million sperm remain. The egg is covered with a layer of cells called the corona radiata. The sperm must push through this layer to reach the outer layer of the egg, the zona pellucida. When sperm reach the zona pellucida, they attach to specialized sperm receptors on the surface, which triggers their acrosomes to release digestive enzymes, enabling the sperm to burrow into the layer. Inside the zona pellucida is a narrow fluid-filled space just outside the egg cell membrane. The first sperm to make contact will fertilize the egg. After a perilous journey and against incredible odds, a single sperm attaches to the egg cell membrane. Within a few minutes, their outer membranes fuse and the egg pulls the sperm inside. This event causes changes in the egg membrane that prevent other sperm from attaching to it. Next, the egg releases chemicals that push other sperm away from the egg and create an impenetrable fertilization membrane. As the reaction spreads outward, the zona pellucida hardens trapping any sperm unlucky enough to be caught inside. Outside the egg, sperm are no longer able to attach to the zona, meaning inside the egg, the tightly packed male genetic material spreads out. A new membrane forms around the genetic material, creating the male pronucleus. Inside the genetic material, reforms into 23 chromosomes. The female genetic material, awakened by the fusion of the sperm with the egg, finishes dividing, resulting in the female pronucleus which also contains 23 chromosomes. As the male and female pronuclear form, spider web-like threads called microtubules pull them toward each other. The two sets of chromosomes join together, completing the process of fertilization, and at this moment, a unique genetic code arises. Instantly determining gender, hair color, eye color, and hundreds of other characteristics. This new single cell, the zygote, is the beginning of a new human being. And now the cilia and the fallopian tube gently sweep the zygote toward the uterus, where he or she will implant in the richer uterine lining, growing and maturing for the next nine months until ready for birth. And for the last stage, the fetal development. The zygote will then develop later into an entire organism. The length of development varies from one animal to another. 
for us humans, it will take about 9 months to develop into a full-grown baby before it is born. Yes, sexual reproduction takes time unlike a sexual reproduction, but it ensures genetic variation for the assured survival of the next generation. Just a quick recap. There are two types of animal reproduction, asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. Both types have their advantages and disadvantages. And those permit the survival of their species and balance of the ecosystem. Asexual reproduction does not involve the union of the gametes to form an offspring. Rather, there are methods to produce offsprings through budding, binary fission, fragmentation, and parthenogenesis. Sexual reproduction involves fertilization or the union of gametes to form an offspring. It starts with the transport of the sperm from the male organ into the female organ through sexual intercourse, followed by fertilization of the egg cell and the development of the fetus. Lastly, there are animals that undergo internal fertilization and there are also some that are adapted to take external fertilization. That wraps up our discussion. I'm sure that you have learned something today. If you have still questions and clarifications, just write it down and message your Earth and Life Science teacher. See you again tomorrow, same time, here on DWNDFM, CMD Cable Channel 8, and follow the FB page of SDO Kawayan for more live updates and information. Remember what Malcolm X quoted, that education is the passport to the future for those who prepare for it today. This has been your teacher, Jaiselyn Cornejo for BTV Escuela, bringing education to your homes. Keep safe everyone.